Hey everybody, what is up? In this video, we're gonna address the last of our big three macro measures. It's a scary one, people, inflation. Make sure to smash that like button to defeat the inflation monster. Okay, so inflation can be kind of terrifying. If you don't believe me, Google it or search inflation on YouTube. You'll see some scary stuff out there. But you'll also find a lot of misunderstanding. So we really need to establish what inflation is. But first, I want to establish what it isn't. Inflation is not the same thing as a price increase. We learned how supply and demand determine prices and sometimes cause prices to increase. Maybe people want to drive more, so there's more demand for gas. Or maybe there's been a disruption in extracting oil from the ground. But if you drive past the gas station and see that the price has gone up, it's not correct to describe that as inflation. Inflation is a sustained increase in the price level of goods and services in an economy. It's not an increase in the price of any single good, but rather showing a general or broad increase in prices throughout the economy. Another way to describe it is as a loss of purchasing power. Imagine that you have $1,000 to spend and you buy a whole bunch of different stuff, but then next month you have $1,000 to spend once again. If there's been inflation, that $1,000 won't buy as much as it did before. Your money has lost some of its purchasing power. In the next video, we'll discuss the costs of inflation and why it can be so problematic. But for the rest of this video, we're gonna focus on calculating inflation. There are actually a few different ways to measure inflation. None of them are perfect and they each have their own strengths and weaknesses. The most common measurement is called the Consumer Price Index or the CPI. What it does is measure the cost of a market basket of goods that's designed to represent the typical purchases of an average urban American family, including the cost of things like housing, food, transportation, and health services. And they measure and remeasure how much the same basket of goods costs over time. Sometimes test questions will provide you with CPI numbers and sometimes they won't. So you need to know what to do if they don't and you have to calculate the cost of the market basket yourself. Let's imagine a simple economy with a market basket consisting of only two goods. You can see the price and quantity of each good for each year here. What I'm about to say is super important. When you calculate the cost of a market basket, you use the prices of the given year and the quantities from the base year. Remember, we're trying to measure inflation, which is a price change, so we don't want to be distracted by how much the quantity or output changed. We only care about how much the prices changed. So we use the base year quantity as a control. Our base year is 2022, so we'll be using 2022 quantities to calculate our market basket for all three years. Okay, so starting with 2022, first good X, 10 times 10 is $100. Do the same thing for good Y, five times 40 is $200. We add those together and the cost of our market basket or comb for 2022 is $300. Not too bad, right? Pause the video if you wanna calculate the other years. Okay, so we make sure to use the base year quantities. So it's 13 times 10 and five times 40 in 2023. For 2024, it's $9.50 times 10 and 10 times 40. So now what do we do with all this information? Now that we have the market basket costs for each year, we need to convert this to a CPI. To find the CPI, take the cost of the market basket in the given year, divided by the cost of the market basket in the base year, and then multiply that times 100. Since 2022 is the base year, we end up with $300 divided by $300, and then times 100 equals 100. The CPI in the base year will always equal 100 because the given year is the base year. So let's do it for 2023. $330 divided by $300 equals 1.1 times 100 equals 110. Notice that there's no symbol for CPI, no dollar sign, no percentage, just the number. The CPI is useful because it shows us at a very quick glance that the price level is higher in 2023 than it was in 2022. And we can do it again for 2024 and we get 165. The last thing we need to do is find the inflation rate. The inflation rate is the percent change in the price level from one year to the next. And we calculate it the same way as we would any other percent change. To find the inflation rate, we take the CPI in the second year and subtract the CPI of the first year, and then divide that by the first year's CPI. This answer is then converted into a percentage by multiplying by 100. 
So for 2023, we take 110 minus 100, which equals 10, and then divide by 100 and multiply by 100, which equals 10%. For 2024, we're now measuring inflation from 2023. 165 minus 110 equals 55. Divided by 110 equals 0.5 times 100 equals 50%. And voila, we have our inflation rate. Now, there's an important downside to the CPI known as substitution bias that must be pointed out. Substitution bias refers to the fact that the CPI measures the prices of the same exact set of goods each time. But the thing is, as we already learned, when the price of one thing increases, consumers typically substitute away from that good and buy something else instead. So if the price of pork rises, most of us would buy chicken or beef instead. The CPI doesn't account for that because it takes the basket of goods that people buy as fixed. Therefore, and this is really important, the CPI overstates the true inflation rate because it doesn't account for people altering their purchases when prices change. Additionally, the CPI doesn't do a very good job accounting for changes in the quality of something. The CPI might measure the increased price of phones as contributing to inflation without acknowledging the fact that phones we buy today are vastly superior to the phones from a decade ago and in fact do much more than those old phones did and actually replace other pieces of technology that we used to have to buy and we don't have to buy any longer. All the CPI sees is that the dollar cost of phones has increased. So this is another weakness of CPI as a measure of inflation. Lastly, there's a couple of things that I'll point out now, and we'll talk about them more in upcoming videos. We've only used the CPI to measure inflation, but we can also use something called the GDP deflator. Video 2.6 will talk more about that and it will also explore the difference between so-called real and nominal variables. Again, for now, I'll simply point out that real variables are nominal variables deflated by the price level. And last, last thing, the overall price level can and has decreased at times. This is known as deflation, and this is not to be confused with disinflation, which we'll consider more in a future unit. Deflation refers to a reduction in the price level. With deflation, money becomes more valuable and things become less expensive in dollar terms. Okay, so that's the measurement part of inflation. In the next video, we'll discuss the costs of inflation. So until then, this has been a La Money production. Thanks again for watching. Please hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and make sure to check out the description to get the answers to these practice questions on the screen, which you absolutely should be doing. And I will see you in the next video.